Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. I'm bringing you an updated Barbie Basics series. It's a series where I talk about my makeup routine and the steps I do and the steps I take. I am a certified makeup artist now, so I know a lot more than I did back then. And this week I'm going to start with primers, foundation, and concealer, so enjoy the video. For this week's video, I'm going to talk about primers and foundations. So primer and foundation are an important skill in makeup and there's a lot of things you need to know so let's get into it. So the first thing I wanted to talk about is what primer to choose for your skin type. If you are more dry, you're going to want a hydrating primer. It also just will help your makeup last a little longer because it will give you that stickiness to your skin. For hydrating primers, I really liked the Too Faced um, Hangover Primer. I've used this a lot. I'm literally out of it. This one's great because it has coconut in it and hyaluronic acid. And hyaluronic acid is going to draw more moisture to your skin so you're going to stay hydrated throughout the day. I just started using this one. It's called Glossy. It's from B Touch and Soul. It's like a glassy skin balm. It really is very hydrating and it makes your skin look like wet. But when you put makeup on, it has that stickiness that it'll stick to and it lasts a long time. So I really enjoy this one. If you have more normal skin, really any primer could work. I wouldn't go something that's too hydrating and I wouldn't go something that's too, you know, drying or pore filling. Um, for everyday skin, I like the e.l.f. Uh, poreless putty primer this one's great um, they also this is comparable to like the Tatcha one but way less expensive I think this is six dollars and they do have a hydrating and a mattifying version if you're looking for that this is a great affordable primer but if you have more um, oily skin you're definitely gonna have problems with pores because they're wide open because they're usually secreting a lot of oil I like the professional primer it's more of a pore filling primer a little drying so on days where I feel like I am more dry I do not use this because it'll make me look like the Sahara Desert but if you're oily this is amazing so as well as face primers you're going to want to use a lip primer or an eye primer I personally love the Urban Decay anti-aging primer not only is this good for eyeshadow which I'll touch on later but this is really great for under your eyes and helping your concealer stay I know a lot of people have problems with creasing this helps. It's an anti-aging primer so it's going to even out that skin over time and it's going to make your makeup last. I also like the Becca Under Eye Corrector. This is if I'm like really dark circles, like if I stayed up until 4am and like had to wake up at 8, this is bomb. Uh, there's two different shades in this line which is kind of unfortunate but this is great for that. For my lips I always like a hydrating lip balm. I just use this Himalayan one. I always put this on like right before I do my foundation when I'm priming. So that way if I get foundation on my lips, there's already something kind of like wet there so I can just get it off easier. So with primer, skincare is a very important step of your makeup routine. I know a lot of people don't think it is, but you should always do your skincare before you put makeup on and your primer should enhance and help what you're doing with your skin. So your primer is kind of a barrier, a layer between foundation and skincare. It's just like painting a wall and you want to start by painting the canvas that way first and then you can go in with everything on top. So yeah, primer is very important, especially in the foundation process. To reiterate, if you have dry skin, you're not going to want to use a more mattifying or pore filling primer because you're going to look like the Sahara Desert. Everything's going to stick and that will mess up the rest of your makeup and vice versa. If you have more oily skin, you're not going to want to use a hydrating primer because you're going to be an oil slick and everything's just going to slide off and it'll be a problem for the rest of your makeup. And if you have normal skin, you're lucky. <laughs> skincare goes hand in hand with primer it is important to do that before you do your primer so you have that barrier and choosing the correct primers for your skin is the number one importance okay so with primers comes foundation and concealer so the importance of choosing the right foundation for your skin if you have more dry skin more oily skin more normal the combination skin there are plenty of different foundations but make sure you do the research and find out what works best for you I am more dry to normal so I have a lot of foundations that go with that and I'm going to talk about them and why I use them but foundation there's a few things that you want to look for when you're choosing one what skin type you have the color of your skin you know what undertone you are how light or dark and what kind of coverage you want if you want a full coverage you're not going to buy a CC cream if you want a light coverage you're not going to buy a Smashbox full coverage foundation just knowing what you're choosing and why you're choosing it for your skin will help immensely. So the first kind of category I have of my own foundations would be something that would give me a more natural or skin-like coverage. 
So for that, I like the Anastasia. This one, I feel like can be very oily. Um, not a very full coverage foundation, but still enough coverage that I'm satisfied. So it's like medium. You could build it if you wanted. This is a luminous foundation, so if you are dry, this is great. If you're more oily, I wouldn't recommend this. And then I also really like the Stay Naked from Urban Decay. This one has a very great coverage, but it's very thin, so it can be kind of more of a medium. Um, I also find that it can be kind of oily if you wear it for a long period of time. It's supposed to last 24 hours, but I don't think you should ever wear a foundation for 24 hours. So this is something I would like if I'm looking for a more natural coverage. For my everyday foundation, I like something that's more of a medium to full coverage. I do have acne, so I like to cover it. So these are my three favorites. I like the Too Faced Born This Way. If I want something a little lighter, um, you can build this. Obviously, they are medium to full. This one has hyaluronic acid in it as well, so you can get a lot of good moisture throughout the day. I just don't think this is really my perfect shade. I know they do have a good shade range, but I can't really find one. I'm kind of difficult, so I often mix that with other ones. This is a foundation I've been loving a lot recently. It's the NARS Natural Radiant Longwear Foundation. I think it was called All Day Radiant at some point. Mont Blanc is my shade. It's like my best color match out of all my foundations freaking love this. The only thing that's not great about NARS is they're not cruelty free, which is kind of unfortunate. This is a tried and true. Everyone who loves makeup has tried this freaking foundation. It's Estee Lauder Double Wear. Great coverage, a little more on the dry sides. I use this on days where I use like a more moisturizing primer just to balance it out. Sometimes I like to mix the NARS with this because you're getting that moisture from the NARS and the coverage of this together. So this is a great foundation. <laughs> So then sometimes if I'm doing like really intense beauty makeup or something more drag, I like a very full coverage foundation. So I have three that are like super high coverage. The first one I like is the Becca. This one is like the least um, obnoxious out of the three to wear. Um, this one has broke me out in the past, but lately it hasn't at all. I wonder if it's my skin changing, but this is a 24 hour wear foundation just like the Urban Decay but this one actually has that coverage you can feel, where the other one is more thin. This is like thick on your face. And then I have the Smashbox. This is also a 24 hour wear full coverage foundation. This guy is like paint for your skin. Um, I've used this once all over my face. I think my shade in this is a little too light for me, but I like to use it on like the high points of my face sometimes with the Estee Lauder to give like a very like covered, like light hitting beaming glowing look this one is great for that this is very very full coverage be warm and the last one is the pure four-in-one love your selfie foundation this is really full coverage um the four-in-one kind of refers to how you can use it in different ways um it does have a doe foot applicator inside which is really cool so if you wanted to use it as a concealer you can do that um, I often use this the same way I would use the Smashbox just in the center of my face because I do feel like the shade is a little light for me, but the great thing about this line is there's a hundred shades in the pure 4-in-1, so there is a perfect shade for me, it's just not sold in an Ulta, I'd probably have to order it online, but this, this is very full coverage and it looks great if you apply it with a brush, so. I love this one. But to bounce off what I just last said with my foundations, you kind of want to apply them all differently. There's a very big preference in how you apply your foundation. You can use a brush, you can use a sponge, um, if you use your hands, your trash. So I like a sponge for most of my applications. There are some days where I want like a more lighter coverage or just something just to kind of get it on. I will use actually this like IT Cosmetics brush. It's dirty right now because I used it yesterday. but. This is a great brush, something like this that's more dense to pack the makeup in. I usually apply my foundation on the back of my hand and I go on with the sponge or the brush just so I'm not directly putting the applicators on my face if I need to use them on like a friend, just for sanitation purposes. I know it is said that you can get a more full coverage foundation with a brush instead of a sponge, but I feel like for me that is not the case. I feel like it's easier to layer on foundation with a wet sponge than it is to put on another layer with a brush because then you get more streaky. So with foundation comes concealer. I use a few different concealers on the daily. Right now to go with the NARS that I've been wearing, I've been using the NARS Radiant Creamy Concealer. Um, this 
is like the perfect shade for my skin. It's a little pink, which I am a little red, so it's perfect. Um, it's not a super, super high coverage, which is fine for concealing blemishes and stuff. But that's why I like the Becca. This one is the ultimate coverage longwear. This kind of goes hand in hand with that foundation. It's very thick, very full coverage. I bought this in a shade lighter than what my skin tone is to highlight. I like to highlight with concealer because I feel like once you put the powder on, it's already done the work for you. So I usually put this more on like the high points of my face. And I put this where I just need coverage for like acne and stuff like that. In the past, I really liked the Too Faced Born This Way concealers. I have two shades. I do the same thing with these. Um, just kind of putting the darker one where it matches my skin tone. And then I put the lighter one in the places where I want more of a highlight. Um, these are great. They also have hyaluronic, same as the rest of the Born This Way line. Um, I just feel like with my skin, because I'm more dry, these might be a little too oily instead of hydrating at times. So I feel like they crease. But when I use them in conjunction with the foundation, they work great, so do with that what you will. <laughs> okay, so I like to start with my eye primer. This is the Urban Decay one. I like to place this on my lids and below my eyes, so I'm going to go ahead and do that. The great part about this is it is anti-aging, so it's great for under your eyes, so it's going to give you that coverage and help your eyeshadow stick as well as your concealer. So I rub that in using my ring finger or my middle finger. Don't ever use your pointer finger to rub in products around your eye because they are way too powerful and you create way more wrinkles that way. So I'm just rubbing that in. I like to get it all the way up to my brow bone because obviously I will be placing products there. So once that is set, I will go in with the Glassy uh, Pretty Filter Glossy Skin Balm. And this guy's like a weird, weird box. And then I take like, literally like this much, and I just kinda put it on my face like I would a moisturizer. And then I rub that all in. I'm gonna go ahead and do that. Just kinda using circular motion so everywhere it gets it and making sure it goes across my whole face. So that is the way I like to apply my primer and what works best for me. And my skin, I am feeling more dry, so using the more hydrating stuff is exactly the move for today. Okay. Now I'm going to move on to talking about foundations and what I do in that scenario. So now I'm moving into foundation. I'm going to be using my Beauty Blender today and mixing the Estee Lauder and the NARS. So I'm going to be taking two or three pumps of each so it's more even of the NARS and the Estee Lauder on the back of my hand. Three of the Estee Lauder. And then I'm going to go in with the NARS, sometimes five. <laughs> and then I like to take my beauty blender directly into it and kind of mix them a little together on the back of my hand, just like that, before I go in and apply it on my face. So I like to stipple it on. You never want to rub with the beauty blender. That is just not the technique. I do go for something a little lighter because I like to go in and add contour and highlight and all that jazz, and you will see that later. But yeah, just getting this on the skin. And I always like to start from the bottom up. I don't want to pull my skin down, so I like to start at my chin and work my way up. Skincare things, just taking care of your skin, making sure you don't wrinkle. Obviously, if you see my skincare video, I don't like wrinkles, so this helps eliminate that making sure it covers my nose, the sides of my face, and my chin below to my neck. The hardest place is my big forehead. <laughs> I love the uncontoured foundation. Oh, it looks spooky. You look like a little Voldemort. <laughs> I look like a ghost. A sexy ghost, at least. Voila, it's on. So now I'm going in with my concealer. I'm going to take the Becca one first. This is my lighter color concealer. I'm going to place it right near my inner corner. 
near my outer corner because I'm creating that halo effect to lift up my eye. And I also like to put the lighter color underneath my mouth to give me more of like a pouty look. And then I go in with the NARS, which is more my skin tone. Place this in the center. I'm running out of this. Need more. Anywhere I have blemishes, so this guy, these guys. Sometimes I'll go in on my forehead a little too. Just for some extra coverage right between my brows. And then I go in with my beauty blender and I'm going to blend that out. Can you imagine if I didn't and I just left it with big lines? That'd be really, really beautiful. Very sexy. Very sexy. And I'm keeping that kind of, I pinch my beauty blender so it really gets in there. You can get one of those tiny beauty blenders for this, but I feel like that is an unnecessary waste of another $20 <laughs> when I can just pinch it and get the same effect. And make sure you blend into your eyelid if you have this weird crease like me. Cool. It's all about the blending. I think that's why I love a beauty blender so much because keyword blender way easier to do with this product than it is with a brush for me. I do like to keep this line pretty harsh though around my mouth. That way I know not to put foundation in there so it doesn't muddy up my lipstick later on. You gotta think ahead. now I'm a sexy ghost. So thank you for watching my video on primer, foundation, and concealer. My next video is going to be on powder and contouring, so stay tuned for that. Make sure you subscribe to my channel so you're notified when I post new videos. Follow me on my social media, and I will see you next time.